locations. We now have 17 institutions offering, on my calculations, about 53 different accredited pathways through to a degree at the end. That could be a straight degree title, uh, BSc Archaeology, or um, we've got some Archaeology and Heritage degrees from institutions, but also pathways through a variety of module options which carry that accredited status. If we look at the number of institutions around the UK as a whole, there's probably about 37, 40 institutions offering um, archaeology degree routeways, which would be eligible for accreditation application. So we're almost about 50% of institutions currently offering archaeology heritage themed degrees with that accredited status. How does accreditation work? It's based around competency matrices, the same as you're all familiar with for your individual membership of CIFA, but it's done to the degree level, so applied at the degree level, and these are aligned to the National Occupation Standards, a variety of different um, standards across national level, and the key themes that we can have accreditation under, research analyze, health and safety, ethical frameworks and personal development, not intrusive archaeology, intrusive archaeology, analysis and interpretation, uh, conservation procedures, and uh, more equality, diversity, inclusivity related aspects around identifying and evaluating requirements of users of exhibitions and interpreted activities. So a wide variety of criteria that people become accredited around, but you don't have to have met all of these different uh, frameworks or competency matrices to have an accredited degree. You can have a subset or selection of these which are accredited. There we go. So coming back to uh, the key framework, which we just saw from Hannah around the theme of the conference of CIFA this year, our profession's future will be sustainable only if archeologists continue to provide effective, creative, and very visible service to the public. Part of what we do as degrees and accredited degrees is provide that workforce for um, the archaeology and heritage profession. Obviously, it's not the only avenue into the archaeological heritage sector, but it is one of a variety of avenues which people can undertake to become members of a workforce. And we'll hear some more from Cara in a few moments around those different avenues and pathways which can be undertaken. As a um, lecturer at university, I'm heavily involved in one of those pathways, but I'm not going to argue that one way is better than another. Part of the accreditation process, the joint aspect between CIFA and University of Archaeology UK is to break down that perceived or actual division around commercial uh, sector archaeology and the more educational university side. That division doesn't actually exist. We should see it as a single profession and a variety of avenues into that professional activities. So when we are considering what do universities provide in terms of um, education for the workforce, if we take both the accredited aspect, modules, units, and the degree application as a whole, then we're looking around the wider skills, not just those accredited professional skills and uh, technical capabilities, which would be required to meet a threshold standard for accreditation to be awarded, but also um, variety of aspects around research activities, so skills for research, skills for sustainable future and sustainable professional careers going forwards, that sustainable workforce, building a solid base of workforce which can develop into different avenues and different career paths going forwards. Skills for innovation and entrepreneurship. I know we've got some uh, uh, fairly recent entrepreneurial companies in the exhibition upstairs which have come out of a variety of degree and university background areas. Skills for diversity and inclusivity, as we saw from Penny a few moments ago, then getting 
that uh, diverse and inclusive workforce is a key aspect to providing a sustainable future for archaeology and heritage as a professional sector. But also, as we'll come on to in a, a short while, increasing skills around ethical competence. So what ethics do we need to consider in terms of applications for archaeological practice, heritage practice, not only in terms of um, diversity, inclusivity, uh, climate ethics, as we've just seen from Hannah, but also around the impact that our activities have directly upon other participants of communities and societies as a whole. And hopefully a number of you will have seen the recent edition of The Archaeologist, which was largely focused around these EDI activities and a number of innovations which have come out of the university um, departments, institutions, some of which you've seen on the accredited list just a few moments ago, around broadening that public participation outreach activities from both university and uh, commercial sector units. So there's a variety of things which have been done by CIFA and UAC in combination around providing that sustainable education going forward to create a sustainable workforce in the archaeological and heritage sector. We have another session tomorrow afternoon around innovation. So part of the accreditation process can be seen as very much maintaining the status quo, hit criteria and then stick, keep delivering those things which are accredited. That's not the intention of accreditation. We want to encourage innovation, encourage developments, and encourage novel ideas coming through into educational practice, both in university level, but also disseminating that into the wider sector as a whole. And I think that's it done. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.